Hey guys, what's up? This is Aaron. Today we're gonna look at the Shure Aeonic 50 noise cancelling headphones. Now, many of you know that a brand like Shure, they have been making studio grade professional gear for people like musicians, artists, and people who do a lot of studio work. These compared to the more popular mass consumer models out there like the Sony WH-1000XM4. Look, it says here on the box, long wearing comfort, up to 20 hours of battery life, environment mode, which I assume to be ambient sound pass through, adjustable noise cancellation, and it supports Bluetooth 5, as well as a wide array of audio codecs, APTX, APTX HD, APTX low latency, AAC, SBC, and LDAC. So no shortage here as far as the number of high resolution capable audio codecs is concerned. I like to point out that the Sony WH-1000XM4 only supports three audio codecs, AAC, SBC, and LDAC. So this is a huge difference. It's also got app support through the Shure Plus Play app. So it's possible to customize these headphones on a deeper level, as well as to get software updates over the air. The app also allows you to customize the headphones sound quality using a set of presets or a graphic equalizer. It also allows you to tweak the headphones noise cancelling or ambient sound pass through to a level that you prefer. Now, in terms of price, they retail for $399, which is 50 bucks more expensive than the Sony's. So I'm wondering how do these more expensive models from Shure compare to the Sony's in terms of things like sound quality, phone call quality, and noise cancelling performance. Let's crack into the box, see what it's got. Okay, so what we have here, we have, well, basically everything is in this case. Now, this is a huge case. Wow, check out the difference in size. I mean, this is definitely not one of the more portable models out there. Let's just put it that way. Let's open this case and it is a pretty good case though. A very firm and uh, solid hard carrying case. Okay, so we've got a USB type A to USB type C cable, a 3.5 millimeter to 2.5 millimeter audio cable, and we've got some literature as well. And these are the headphones. Let me just take them out. They seem to be very well built. Like, indeed, this does feel like a pair of professional grade studio headphones. Oops, I dropped the case. Its ear cups do fold flat and that's great, but I also feel that its articulation is a little too stiff for my liking. It simply takes a little more effort to swing the ear cups around compared to competing models. On the other hand though, this also means that these joints could be a little more durable than that of competing models. And also, these ear cups don't fold inwards into a more compact form factor like the Sony XM4s. Okay, stretch test. Let's see how durable the headband is. Okay, so far so good. Yeah, it's not bad. It seems pretty durable. On the right ear cup is where you're gonna find all the control buttons. The power button as well as the Bluetooth pairing button, the volume and music control buttons, as well as the noise cancelling toggle. The USB Type-C charging port is also on the right ear cup, whereas the 2.5mm audio input jack is on the left ear cup. Overall, its build quality is pretty good. It doesn't feel cheap at all, which is something that you will expect for headphones that cost 400 bucks. Plus, I kind of like how its cushions feel. It's very thick, soft, and plush, and the headband too is generously padded, so they should be very comfortable to wear. Let's give this a go. Oh yeah. Generously padded ear cups, generous padding on the headband, and it feels like a pillow is wrapping itself around my head. Yeah, its clamping pressure too is pretty gentle, it's not too tight. So yeah, they could be very comfortable to wear for long periods of time. Let's pair this to my phone and let's see how they compare to the Sony's in terms of sound quality.
Hmm. Okay, so after repeated A to B comparisons with the XM4, I gotta say that the Shure Aeonic 50 can definitely resolve more detail in the mid and upper frequency range. They also sound cleaner overall in terms of track separation, and in terms of sound staging, it sounds a little wider than the sound staging of the XM4. They also sound a little crisper in the mid-range, which works very well for vocals music. So if you're looking for a pair of headphones that can present more detail in your music, sounds more open in terms of sound staging, and a little cleaner in terms of track separation, the Shure Aeonic 50 is the right one for you. The XM4 headphones, on the other hand, they do have some advantages. Uh, for example, they are about 5-10% to louder than the Aeonic 50, so 50% volume on the XM4 is gonna sound a little more like 55-60% to volume on the Aeonic 50. Also, the XM4 has deeper bass extension with a little more bass impact in the upper bass range. So if you want more bass and more volume in your music, then the XM4s might be a better choice. Plus, if you activate DSE Extreme through the Sony Headphones Connect app, it is possible to bring the XM4s detail level, uh, clarity, and sound staging to a level very close to that of the Aeonic 50. In fact, after upscaling my audio through DSE Extreme, the XM4s sounded a little closer to the sound quality of the Shure Aeonic 50. Except for perhaps sound staging. In terms of sound staging, the Aeonic 50 still sounded a bit more open and more spacious than the XM4 even after DSE Extreme was applied. Now, is it then possible to get more bass onto the Shure's, more bass extension, more bass impact using the graphic equalizer in the Shure Plus Play app? I've tried to do it, but as much as I've tried to tweak its sound signature to my liking, it appears that the Shure's sound signature is pretty much fixed. As in, although the graphic EQ within the Shure Plus Play app looks very professional and it uses terms that people in the professional audio industry would be more familiar with, it seems like any changes I make to its sound signature sounds minor at best. So it's fair to say that the graphic EQ has very limited use when it comes to tweaking the Shure Aeonic 50's sound signature. So its sound signature isn't going to be as customizable as the XM4's using the Sony Headphones Connect app. Alright, now let's move on to the phone call quality test. As usual, I'm going to play some really loud cafe style background noise to simulate making a phone call in a noisy cafe environment and I'm going to record a voice memo on my phone using these headphones. Background noise, Shure Aeonic 50, record. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turned with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. Background noise, except pause, record. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turned with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turned with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turned with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. I think the Shures did pretty well in terms of background noise cancellation. In fact, 
you can sort of tell that when I started to speak, the shuas reacted very quickly and began suppressing a lot of that background noise. It might be even a little better at background noise suppression than the Sony's, but I just prefer how my voice sounded through the Sony's. It sounds way more natural, you know, it's got more volume, more body, more clarity in it. Uh, so in terms of overall phone call quality, I am leaning a little more towards the Sony's, even though it doesn't suppress as much background noise as the Shure's. But what do you guys think? Which of these headphones sounded better to you through the recordings? Let me know in the comments. Okay, now it's time for the noise cancelling test. As usual, I'm gonna play the same background noise that I played before and let's see, how powerful is the Shure Aeonic 50's ANC compared to the Sony's? So, in terms of noise cancelling performance, I think the Shures did a pretty effective job at cancelling lower frequency noises. So, it should be quite effective at cancelling the rumbling of a subway train or the droning of a plane's engine for when you get to fly. But I think we can agree that in terms of sheer noise cancelling power, the Sonys are still the king of noise cancelling headphones. It simply is better at cancelling lower frequency noise as well as cancelling mid-range frequency noises. So there is a lot more silence there and if you're looking to cancel the noise of your noisy co-workers or the sound of a baby crying, the Sonys are going to be much more effective than the Shures at cancelling these types of noises. So overall, here's what I like about the Aeonic 50. I like its build quality, it feels very premium, very expensive, it's got thick padded ear cups and thick padding on the headband too, so it feels very comfortable to wear. In fact, the words that I used earlier was, it's like wearing a pillow on your head, yeah, it's that comfortable. So you can wear this for hours on end, no problem. Also, it sounds very good, it's very addictive to listen to. Audio files might appreciate the Aeonic 50's sound quality over the XM4 because I am aware that quite a number of audiophiles feel that the XM4s sound a little too bassy. If that is so, then they may lean a little more towards the Aeonic 50 because its bass response is a little thinner but it's got cleaner track separation, more detail in the mid-range, more texture in the lower mids, 
a little more sizzle in the highs and overall it just sounds cleaner and it's got better sound staging too compared to the XM4. The only way the XM4 can uh, be enhanced to a degree that's close to the Aeonic 50 in terms of sound is if you activate DSE Extreme. But like I said, even with DSE Extreme activated, the XM4's sound staging is not going to be as open or as airy as that of the Aeonic 50. On top of that, the Aeonic 50 also supports more popular high-res codecs than the XM4's. For example, it supports codecs like aptx, aptx low latency, aptx hd, and ldac, whereas the only high-res capable audio codec that the XM4 supports is ldac. So, not very attractive there in terms of the flexibility that it can offer audio files, you know, in terms of the kind of codecs that they can choose to stream with. So if you're an audiophile, then you might be leaning a little more towards the Shure Aeonic 50, and for good reason. But I suspect that there are also many people out there who are thinking in terms of phone call quality, noise cancelling performance, features, and just how customizable these headphones are through an app. And they're gonna lean a little more towards the XM4 because not only is the XM4 very customizable through the Sony Headphones Connect app, it's also got a stronger set of features than the Shure Aeonic 50. For example, it's got features like speak to chat, adaptive sound control, auto pause detection, ANC optimizer. You know, if you want to know how these features work, check out this video over here. And in this video, you also see why I say that the XM4s are more feature rich than the Shure Aeonic 50. Furthermore, the XM4s cost 50 bucks less than the Aeonic 50, which is why I feel that the XM4s are gonna be a little more attractive to more people than the Aeonic 50, but what do you guys think? Which of these headphones will you pick based on everything you've seen in this video? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, please smash like if you like this video. Also, if you want to see me compare the XM4 to other headphones in the market, please subscribe and ring the notifications bell because this is the only way YouTube will notify you of new content from this channel. To see me compare the XM4 to the Bose NC700, please watch this video over here. To see me compare the XM4 to the Sennheiser Momentum 3 wireless headphones, please click on this video over here. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next video.